Welcome back to our channel. We're Chloe and Matthew, two wine-loving foodies who have set out to explore the world one bite, sip or slurp at a time. Tucked into Australia's west coast, the Pempleton wine region is less than a four-hour drive from Perth and is a peaceful pocket of forests and misty valleys. The region's cool grape growing conditions is known to produce excellent wines. Pemberton has a climate temperature that's cooler than some of the surrounding regions, thanks in part to its altitude. Summer is warm and quite dry, while the winter is cool and wet. The region's soils include vivid red loams and gravelly soils. Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. We are Chloe, Hi. <laughs> Chloe and Matthew. If you don't know us and you're new here, for those of you that do know us, sorry for annoying intros. It's going to happen time and time again. <laughs> um, like Groundhog Day, <laughs> only more fun. We are exploring the wine regions of Australia. If you checked out our last two videos, you'll know that we visited the Swan Valley and the Margaret. If you haven't, go check them out. Today we are in, where are we? Pemberton. Pemberton. And what is Pemberton known for? Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. And what's special about Pinot Noir? Chloe loves Pinot Noir. It's my jam. It's my favorite. So we are here to find the best Pinot Noir in Pemberton. Let's see if it compares to Burgundy. <laughs> I mean, that's a big, <laughs> that's a tall order. That but might be a bit unfair. Let's give it a go. <laughs> We're gonna find the unique Pinot of the region and probably some other cool stuff too. So yeah, like those cows. Like those cows and that horse that looked like a Dalmatian. Some of them won't, we also can offer you just a quick tasting as well. But you don't have your peanut? No, we don't have our peanut. Fortunately, we've sold out. Mm. Have you been to the little treehouse temple spot in town? We have not. We, we just drove down from Manchester right now. Oh, what are we going to do there, baby? We'll go to these places. Um, we'll go to the tapas bar tonight. That'll actually be nice. Um, we can try to book in at Pemberley, but like I'll try to call them again. She tried to call from in there, but they only do it by appointments and they try to always book in at like 3 p.m. Right here, right there. Hey. Already scored Aww. points because they have a cute winery pup. Monford Wines. We got to try some more? Yes. We. Yep. And maybe ciders too, because. Um, we do charge 15 for the paddle, but if you buy anything over 20 per paddle, you get for free. The Monford family handpicked Pemberton for its unique flavour potential, cool climate, and pristine forests. As early pioneers of the wine industry in the southwest of Western Australia, they are still proud to preserve the distinct essence of the region 35 years later and grow, make, and bottle its taste and story into an organically certified and family brand. And I can see your new red bags. Can we show them our bits? We are the wine nerds who wear <laughs> red bags. Let's get this red. I've been wearing red bags for almost 10 years. In the winery. And now I got my first pair, and I feel like a... I don't even know what I feel like. I think this is the prettiest painting. Yeah. And then again, you're gonna go this way and finish with your truffle liqueur, which is just sweet. So you've got a lemon myrtle cheddar cheese, and you've got a Mediterranean uh, feta. They both come from Nana, which is local as I can get. The olives are organic, they come from ginger bushes, which is dry side vinegar. Awesome, so thank you. Tasting it to fresh water as well. Great, <laughs> thank you. 
It's light. It's fruitier. It's a bit acidic. But it's a totally acceptable peanut. This cellar doll was incredibly charming and crafted by hand using the raw materials found on site. It's pretty impressive that all their products from wines to ciders are grown, made and bottled at the Mountford Estate and they are one of the few wineries in the region that use natural techniques with carbon positive sustainable production and make certified organic wines and cider. While these are not the styles of wines that we typically take home, we had to grab a bottle of their Pinot, being the first one we tried in the region. Oh, I think that is. Um, Lost Lake, I don't know where they'd open. I'd give them a call. They're closed. They're, they, they don't open until Monday. Yeah, right. Above and below, or below and above is open, but they don't have any Pinot. Ah, uh, right. Um, yeah, I can't think of any others, really. So, what are we going to do? I don't know. We're going to call Silver right now and see if they're open. Okay. Let's give them a call. Hey, George, we were just calling to check to see if the cellar door is open today. We are, brother. All right, we are on our way. We've got a little set menu as well here at lunch. Awesome. Sounds good. Yep. Cool banana. See you soon. Thanks. Bye. I like George so far. Because <laughs> he called you brother. Brother. <laughs> and he said cool bananas. <laughs> like, George is scoring cool points so far. So let's hope they pull through for us because we're this close to pulling the pin. Yeah, and if, if this next winery doesn't have something that speaks to us, if this next winery doesn't have something that speaks to us... And if they don't have any Pinot... Well, I don't know if this one has any Pinot, that's oh, the other thing. Shy. Like, everybody's sold out of their Pinots, which means either the majority of them are really, really good, and we just bought the one that was decent from that place, and it was good. It was a nice Pinot. If these guys don't at least have, like, good wines, then... We're out. The entrance is setting a pretty high precedent. Down by the water. Okay. This place is getting better and better. Cabin on the lake vibe. It's no doubt that the restaurant and the location take the prize at this estate. With more of a focus on dining, the wines and tasting experience feel more of an afterthought. This isn't to say that the wines didn't merit. The cellar door is a relaxed setting to sample an extensive range with their passionate and friendly staff. Which one's this one? I have no idea. Oh, you have another one. Oh, sorry. Is that Pinot? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Pinot! Yeah, it's Pinot! Alright, you can just have another one. Great, now I gotta be in the video. Yes, now you have to be in the video. Ooh, this is a This is fresh. It's very, very fresh. Yeah, it's 2022. Do you know what? Yeah, it's kind of reminds me of butterscotch. Really weird. Right. Yeah, it's very, very bright, fruity. It's, it's good. It's, it's, it's very, very specific good. style. Mm. Yeah. Orange pounder pinot. Okay. Right. Um, um, All right. Yeah, put the copyright on that. Okay. Somebody, where's our wood? Yes. Yeah. Orange pounder it is. Why do I smell butterscotch? A bull one. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. It reminds me of there's these um, butterscotch like. Candies that are good for your throat. They're like a medicine and they're Australian and I'm gonna pop them in the screen here. <laughs> and I always used to get my mom to buy them for me because I used to fake that I had a sore throat. Ricola. What? Ricola. You ever heard the old Ricola commercials?
been here six months. Okay. Um, right. We're just over six months. Yeah, we, we own an online business. That's how we can travel. Uh, for the wine industry, mainly. Hi. Wine, food, travel. She's been doing social media and marketing for wine forever. Yeah, right. Um, I've been a, I'm, I'm a winemaker, and now I do consulting and business strategy for startup wines. It's more, more so than her like actually running the page. It's building the strategy for how a winery or a business wants, what, what do they want from their social media. Yeah, sure. And then building a strategy on how to actually do that. George. It's George. George, can we get you on the camera? Because we love the way that you answered the phone. We called and asked if you were open. Yeah. yeah. And you just really friendly when we invited him back. Oh, thanks. And we were like, yeah, we want to come to this place. Like, now we're glad you're here. <laughs> Are you going to have some lunch with us? We were just saying we wish we were hungry. We already ate, but oh. the menu was stunning and the food that you're bringing out was amazing. So, thoughts? The place is beautiful. Stunning. I wish we had been hungry because their chef, He's also serving tables, came up in two-star Michelin restaurants in London, worked in Melbourne. He's been chefing for over 25 years all over the world. So they had three Pinots. Um, the first one was really light, really bright. The second one was good, but it had this kind of weird meatiness on the palate. Like the nose was great. The front of the palate was great, but it finished with this meatiness that kind of threw you off a little bit. And then the expensive one, the nose was beautiful, but then it, it was like there was nothing on the palate. It was kind of like, where'd the wine go? So guys, we're still trying to find the best Pinot in Pemberton, and you know what? Most places are sold out of Pinot. We have one final chance to taste some of these out of stock Pinots. We're gonna hit up the toughest bar. We have been told that they should have the last Pinots that are kind of sold out everywhere in the wineries. It's our last hope to find the best Pinot in Pemberton. Chloe's not going to be happy. How's the puppy? Naughty. How do you like Pemberton? So far. Uh oh. I got bad news. The wine bar closed on Saturdays and Sundays. What do you want to do? We're heading to Franklin. Stay tuned for the next episode where we explore the Franklin River. The question is, will we find what we're looking for this time? It seems to be most wineries and cellar doors are closed. Yes! Benefits of being a cellar hand once upon a time. <laughs> Chloe's getting spoiled by this. Yeah, Chesterfield self is. So surreal to be back here. That was an awesome experience.